Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm the Nerd in the Street, and today we are mounting remote file systems with SSHFS. Okay, everyone, so as you can see behind me, I currently have two computers on my desk. I've got my desktop way in the back, which is currently connected to these two huge monitors, and I still have my System76 servo workstation, the laptop, sitting on the corner there. Both of these computers are extremely capable machines. Both of them have high-end graphics cards and a lot of storage, lots of RAM, so I'm still using both of these computers. I wouldn't call one of them my daily driver, necessarily. Now, that does mean I'm switching back and forth between the two computers a lot and one of the biggest issues with switching back and forth between two computers often is accessing your files on either of those computers. Now this can be more of an issue if you're going back and forth between several locations, but if you've just got two computers sitting on the same desk like I do, there are actually some very simple, very easy ways that you can access files from one computer while you're using the other one. One of those solutions is called SSHFS, and it is a small program, it's a utility that lets you mount a directory over your network using SSH, but unlike something like SFTP, you don't have to use a client for this, a client program like FileZilla or, you know, having your file manager connect to an SFTP share and transfer files one by one. That can work sometimes, but sometimes it causes issues if you're accessing large files or if you're accessing large numbers of files. SSHFS removes some of the complexity from from the equation by just mounting your remote directory over SSH, but it mounts it as a file system. It uses Fuse to mount the file system in user space, which means there's no root access required once you have SSHFS installed on the system. And the only prerequisite is that you have both computers networked together and you have an SSH daemon running on whichever computer you're trying to access the files of. In the case of my desktop and laptop behind me, I have both of them plugged in with Ethernet to a four port switch which is sitting underneath my desk. It's just a cheap Netgear switch. I think it was like 10 or $15 when I bought it a few years ago. I've got a five port Cisco switch sitting in my room somewhere. And if you don't have a switch laying around, you can just connect two computers together by plugging in one end of an ethernet cable into one computer and the other end of the cable into the other computer just directly. Years ago, it used to be more of an issue what type of cable you were using if it was crossover or straight through or whatever. But these days, your computers should be able to figure it out no matter what kind of cable Cable you're using. So put both computers on the same network, make sure they're part of the same subnet, and you can ping from one computer to the other. And once you have that set up, you can install SSHFS and use it with the instructions I'm about to show you right now. Okay, and here we are on my laptop. We are going to open up a terminal here. I'm just going to show you that my current IP address is on my Ethernet link here. 172.16.0.1 and I just set that IP address manually using you know network manager just the applet that I've got and this utility will work wirelessly if you've just got or it will work through a router if you've got all your computers connected to like a wireless access point or something but it will work a lot better faster more reliably um, over a direct wired link especially like I said if you're using large files or large numbers of files. And I am just going to ping my desktop is at 172.16.0.2. You can see we can reach that here and it can reach it in about a third of a millisecond, which is pretty darn fast. So latency should not be an issue. All right, now I'm going to open up a file manager here. I use Dolphin on my laptop. My home folder is kind of cluttered on this computer right now. Now, like I said, at this point, I could just SFTP into my desktop at 172.16.0.2 and it's going to uh, refuse the connection because I don't have SSHD running. So I'm going to go to my desktop right now and I'm going to run systemctl start SSHD just to uh, start the SSH server on my desktop. That was one of the two prerequisites that I listed earlier in the video. So systemctl start SSHD. So now that I've done that over on my desktop, we'll come over here once again and SFTP 172.16.0.2, once again, just to demonstrate that we can connect this way. And you can see this is the home folder for my desktop. So it's much cleaner than the home folder for my laptop. I actually do use the desktop slightly more. I just have the files better organized over here. So right now, since I'm using Dolphin, KIO is what's actually handling this SFTP connection here. That's the KDE input output 
daemon, and you may be aware that KIO is kind of slow, does not work very well with large files over a network. So like I said, we're going to solve that problem using SSHFS. So if you just run the command SSHFS here, you'll see it says missing host, and you can actually type in the uh, help flag to get the usage. And all you have to do is type in SSHFS user at host, so just like you're SSHing in, then you put a colon, you put the directory you're trying to get to, and then you put the mount point on the local machine that you're trying to mount it to. So just for demonstration purposes here, um, or rather not just for demonstration purposes, but to set a good example, uh, you could just make a folder in your home directory, call it desktop files, uh, and I could just mount this system right here, and it would appear in my home directory. I'm not going to do that. It's better form just to go into your slash mount directory on your machine and actually make a folder in here, of course, that does require root access. Like I said, if you don't have root access but this program is installed, you can do the whole thing just by making a folder in your home directory. But we're going to do things the proper way here. Since I do control this machine, I'm going to CD into the slash mount directory of my computer. If you don't have slash mount, you can make it. We're going to sudo make directory impulse workstation. That's the name of my desktop. And then we're going to chown jacob jacob impulse workstation. Operation not permitted, right, sudo. All right, there we go. So now I can come in here and Dolphin is gonna let me make a new folder or a new text file or whatever just to test that I do have uh, permissions here to read from and write to this folder. So at this point, now we can come back out here and we'll mount this using SSHFS on the command line. So the command we're going to use, we'll X out of this SFTP here. That connection is no longer needed. We're going to type in SSHFS Jacob at 172.16.0.2. That's my desktop colon home Jacob. And I could just mount the root directory if I wanted. Um, since I'm specifically trying to get to my personal files, not necessarily, you know, programs or anything, I'll go ahead and specify slash home slash Jacob so that I don't have to drill down into that directory manually once I have it connected. We'll put a space and the local directory that we're mounting to is slash mount slash impulse workstation. So if I press enter now, it'll ask me for my password there to connect and I'll put that in. And now if I go back to that impulse workstation folder, just like magic, everything is there. And it appears to our system to be just on our local file system under the slash mount directory, but it is accessing things over the network. And we can tell by opening up our system monitor here. And if you'll pay attention to the network history down here. Right now it says we are receiving at zero bytes per second, 215 bytes per second, not very much that we are receiving there. If we go into our videos directory here and go into our Extra Life 2018 directory, let's access the full recording of Extra Life 2018. I've actually got the entire uh, 27 hour video here in one file. It's a 41 gigabyte MP4 file. So if I tried to access this using SFTP, basically my system would have to copy the entire 41 gigabytes from my desktop to my laptop before it starts displaying it on the laptop. Um, but since we have our remote directory mounted over SSHFS right now, and our system, as far as it's concerned, Dolphin, MPV, that's going to open this up in a second, all the programs on my computer think that this is just a local file, and SSHFS is going to just grab it as we need it off of my desktop's SSD and send it over that Ethernet cable to the laptop here as soon as I open this up. So I'm going to double click and you'll see here it's playing. And if I go, we look at our uh, system monitor here. We are currently receiving at 134 kilobits per second. Not actually receiving very, very much here. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. Uh, let's try jumping around within this file. If I jump to 10 hours in, you saw a spike there. Um, SSHFS, it's actually, it's grabbing this so 
efficiently that it's hard to see on the graph. Uh, now you can see, now you can see. It said 97 megabytes per second there. And you can see on the graph here, this middle line is actually 100 megabits per second. So once again, the graph is making it a little difficult to see, but jumping around here through our 27 hour video, uh, like I said, this huge video file, you can see on the graph, we're, we're downloading it over 100 megabits per second because it's just going over a switch. It's not getting routed or anything, so it's very fast connection wise. Um, and it's grabbing that file and I can just scrub through it with no network latency and no KIO latency more importantly because it's going through SSHFS. That's the advantage to using this over something like just SFTP like I said. Um, I've actually edited over SSHFS before. I can open up Caden Live and uh, drag this file into Caden Live and scroll around it in, in there as well. Once again, not really something you can do with SFTP since it would, like I said, it would want to try and copy the entire file over to your computer if you tried to do that. But you can see here we are currently receiving at about 70 megabytes per second, going down to 30, 40, 50 as Caden Live is scanning the file. And we can just drop that right into our timeline here. And uh, now I can go and I could edit a video out of this footage if I wanted to. This is also going slowly because it's an mp4 file in a video editor which is not really the best thing to do anyway. Uh, but yeah, this is extremely powerful. I am accessing this over the network. I'm using it for video files but you can use it for whatever. I actually uh, I wanted to make this video because there's a virtual machine I wanted to boot on my desktop but my desktop is currently rendering things so the video cards are tied up so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually go back here to uh, the home folder I've got mounted for my desktop and I'm gonna go into my VMware folder and I'm going to mount a virtual machine over SSHFS and just run it over the network since like I said it's not really a full-fledged network it's just a direct connection I'm expecting it to work just fine as well. And finally, this is currently, like I said, in our mount slash impulse workstation directory. But of course, you might not want to type in a directory into your navigation bar every time you want to access these remote files. For some people, once again, that means that it's simpler to just go into your home directory and make a folder here and mount it there. For me, though, what I do is I just go back up to my mount directory, right click on the folder that I use to mount my remote file system, and I just click add to places here in Dolphin. So now it shows up right here. I've got my home folder locally. I've got my root directory trash and I've got some of my local directories here as well. And then at the bottom, I've got the remote directory. It just takes me right there. And you know, you can close out of this terminal. We can close out of everything else until that network link is broken. If I were to unplug the ethernet cable right now, it would stop working until we plug it back in and run the command again. But as long as we do have connectivity with this folder, I can just switch right between our two different home folders just with these two easy shortcuts and I'm sure it's easy to add shortcuts to other file managers as well. So that's all there is to it. I know it is a command line utility but it is very simple to use, very quick and easy. I held off on using it for a long time because it was a command line utility. For a long time I always just went into Dolphin and used SFTP and I was always frustrated at slow speeds when I was transferring things over and trying to access large files and then one day I decided to just just go ahead and try it even though it was command line and it really has improved my workflow a lot with multiple computers on the same desk so I would highly encourage you guys to give it a try as well it's a very simple command once you learn the commands then it's very like I said easy to use if this video was helpful to you consider supporting me on patreon you can find my info for that at nerdclub.nots.co and if you guys have any questions about Linux open source or free software you can ask those down in the comments section below or on my forums at nerdonthestreet.com. For now, though, that's all for this video. So I'm Jacob Kauf, and I'm the Nerd on the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.